This lecture is part of an online commutative algebra course and will be about flatness of completions. So to motivate this, um, we first of all if recall that if we've got a ring R and a prime ideal P, we can construct the localization R sub P where you sort of invert everything that's not in P. And we showed that RP is a flat R module. And we proved this in two steps. First of all, if we've got a module, we can also localize it. And the operation taking M to MP preserves exactness. Um, the second thing we showed is that um, the localization of M at P is naturally isomorphic to M tensored with RP. And these two facts combined show that tensoring with R with the localization RP preserves exactness, so RP is flat. Well, um, we can not only localize at an ideal, we can also take the completion of R at an ideal. So you recall this is the, the completion is the inverse limit of R over I to the N, where I is some ideal. And completion is in some ways a sort of stronger version of localization. And what we want to do, uh, this lecture, is to show that R hat is a flat R module if R is notarian. Um, and we're going to try and copy the proof for localization. Um, however, there are some slight complications because the completion of a module isn't always obtained by taking the module and tensioning with the completion of a ring, and completing a ring doesn't always preserve exactness. So, so um, although we're going to try and sort of imitate this proof, there will be some extra complications. Um, so the first step is to show that if A 0 goes to A goes to B goes to C goes to naught is exact, so these are all R modules, then naught goes to A hat goes to B hat goes to C hat goes to naught is exact if A, B and C are finitely generated. So this is the analogue um, of the corresponding result for localization. So if we're localizing the prime ideal, then we know that naught goes to AP goes to BP goes to CP goes to zero is also exact. Um, before giving the proof of this, let's just show that it does actually fail if A, B and C are not finitely generated. For example, you could take the sequence of modules over the integers um, where this is just the rational numbers. And if we now complete at the prime 2, then um, this becomes the two adic integers. If we complete the rationals at the prime 2, we just get 0. And if we complete this at the prime 2, we just get 0. So um, this map here is not injective. So completion doesn't always preserve exactness. Um, so we want to show that it does at least preserve exactness if A, B and C are finitely generated modules. So let's assume that this is exact. And then we notice that the sequence naught goes to A over I to the N um, B intersection A goes to B over I to the N B goes to C over I to the NC goes to naught is exact. And this looks a bit funny because you think this ought to be A over I to the NA. But if we put A over I to the NA there, then this sequence isn't necessarily exact. Um, it's quite easy to find examples of this. For instance, if we look at the sequence naught goes to Z goes to Z, goes to z over 2z, goes to naught. 
and this is multiplication by 2, and we take the ideal i to be 2, then if we try quotienting out by this ideal, we get z over 2z goes to z over 2z goes to z over 2z goes to 0. And this map here is not injective. So we really do have to use this funny expression here instead of i to the n a. Um, anyway, um, what we want to do is to take the inverse limit of these sequences and show that the inverse limit is exact. And you remember that's not always true, that, that there's a sort of funny mittag leffler condition. Um, well, in this case, the mittag leffler condition automatically holds because a over i to the n b intersection a um, is the image of a over i to the n plus 1 b intersection a. So this map is on to, and that's the sort of easy version of the mittag leffler condition. So this means the inverse limit of a over i to the n b intersection a. Um, mapping to the inverse limit of b over i to the nb, mapping to the inverse limit of c over i to the nc goes to naught, is exact. And this thing here is the completion of b, and this thing here is the completion of c, and this thing here, well, it's not entirely obvious whether or not it's the completion of a. So we've got another problem we have to deal with, is the limit of a over i to the n b intersection a equal to the inverse limit of a over i to the n a? So let's put a question mark there. So this is certainly equal to the completion of a, and we want to know if these two are equal. Well, we, that, that's true because we now have the artin Rees lemma, which shows us that the filtration i to the n b intersection a is stable, which means eventually each term is i times the previous term. And this in turn implies that the inverse limit of a over i to the n b intersection a is equal to the inverse limit of a over i to the n a. So um, the this really, this inverse limit really is the completion of A. You notice the artin Rees lemma needs A, B and C to be finitely generated modules and, and fails in general if they're not. Um, um, for example, if naught goes to Z, goes to Q, goes to Q over Z, goes to naught is exact, then we notice that um, um, the, the sequence 2 to the n times q intersection z is not stable. So um, the, the stability result really does require finite, finite generation. Anyway, the conclusion of this is that naught goes to a hat, goes to b hat, goes to c hat, goes to naught is exact. So that's the first lemma. This is the analogue of saying that um, naught goes to a p, goes to b p, goes to c p, goes to naught is exact. So this actually holds for all modules. This only holds for finitely generated modules over a Noetherian ring. So the second thing we want to prove is the following lemma, which says that if m is finitely generated over a Noetherian ring, then the map from M tensor over R R hat to M hat is um, not exact, is an isomorphism. Here um, we're taking completion with respect to some ideal I. Um, Let's first of all notice that this is false if M is not finitely generated. In fact, if M is not finitely generated, this, this map here doesn't need to be injective and it doesn't need to be surjective. If we take M to be the rationals over the integers and we take the ideal to be um, two, then we see that the completion of M is just zero 
um, which is not equal to m tensed over z um, z hat, um, which um, would be the the the, the 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 two addict numbers. On the other hand, if so, so, so this map here um, um, need not be uh, surjective. On the other hand, it need not be injective because if you take m to be the sum of an infinite number of copies of z, then we see that m tensed over z with z hat is just the sum of an infinite number of copies of z hat. Um, however, you can see that the completion of this is actually bigger than this if you stop and think about it because it has elements that have non-zero components um, in, each of, uh, in each of these places. So the conclusion of this is that taking completions is really a rather badly behaved operation for modules that are not finitely generated. Anyway, we now want to get to the proof uh, that, that m tensed over r with r hat is isomorphic to m hat for m finitely generated. Um, and if m is finitely generated, then we can write naught goes to n goes to f goes to m goes to zero, where this is a finitely generated free module and this is a finitely generated module because we're working over a notarian ring. And now let's look at the following sequence. We tensor r hat with this sequence. And this is exact because um, r hat tensored with anything is right exact. I mean, we're trying to show it's left exact, but in the meantime, we at least we know it's right exact. And now we compare this with the following sequence. We map this to n hat. We map this to f hat, and we map this to m hat, and we map that to zero. And now we know this sequence is exact because we just proved that in the previous lemma. And this map here is an isomorphism. So this is an iso as f is free and finitely generated. So for finitely generated free modules, it's very easy to check that this is an isomorphism. Um, next, we show that this map here is onto. So let's mark this as this is step one. So step two, this map here is now onto. And that follows easily from the fact that this is an isomorphism and this map here is onto. So if we've got anything here, we can just lift it to there, lift it to there, and then it's the image of something there. Um, so what we've shown is that if M is a finitely generated module, then R hat tensor M goes to M hat is onto. Well, now we can um, apply this to N, which is a finitely generated um, module. So step three, we know that this map is now onto. Um, well, now, uh, step four, we can apply the five lemma. Well, we're going to apply the five lemma um, by extending this a bit. So we're going to apply um, the five lemma to um, this um, sequence of five modules and this sequence of five modules and, and the five lemma says that if that's an isomorphism and that's an isomorphism this is onto and this is into then this is an isomorphism so this implies r hat tensor m goes to m hat is an isomorphism so that's the end of the proof of the lemma it shows that for finitely generated modules um, this holds now we want to show that r hat is flat. Um, well, you remember, this is the same as showing that tor one of r hat with m is equal to zero for all m. And now we notice that it, this is enough to show for m finitely generated. That's because um, uh, 
Tor 1 commutes with direct limits and also um, any module is a direct limit of its finitely generated submodules. I should say it commutes with maybe filtered. Yeah, that direct limits will do. Um, um, but for finitely generated modules, um, um, we know that r hat tensored over r with m is isomorphic to m hat. And we know that for finitely generated modules, m goes to m hat preserves exactness. So Tor 1 R of R hat in M is equal to 0 for M finitely generated. So for all M, so R hat is flat. Um, so that shows that over a Noetherian ring, any completion is a flat module. Um, well, how do you use this? Well, we quite often want to um, um, we want to move modules from a ring R to its completion. And how do we do this? Well, there are two obvious ways to do this. There's a bad way to do it, which is take um, M to M hat. And there's a good way to do this, which is to take M to M tensor over R with R hat. Now these are actually the same for M finitely generated as we showed earlier. Um, but um, in general this one tends to give us the wrong answer. So let's just see a simple example where it, where it gives the wrong answer. Suppose we, we've got the sequence over the integers z goes to q goes to q over z goes to zero. Um, and we want to turn this into a sequence of modules over z hat. Let, let, let's take the ideal to be, say, just the two adic numbers. Then if we take completions, we get naught goes to um, z2 goes to naught goes to naught goes to naught, which is definitely not what we want. I mean, this isn't exact and these modules become zero and it's really rather a mess. On the other hand, if we um, tensor with z hat, so this is just the two adic integers, then we get naught goes to z2 goes to the two adic numbers, goes to q2 over z2 goes to naught. And this is a this is a much nicer sequence and is the correct analogue of this sequence here over the two adic integers. So um, to summarise, completion is just badly behaved for modules that aren't finitely generated. And instead of taking the completion for these modules, you should just tensor with the completion of your ring. And this behaves a lot better. OK, that's enough about completions. Um, the next few lectures will be about the dimension of rings.